Hello VC, uh, this is Randy, and I am doing this in a response to a vinyl tag by Sam at the Vinyl Douche, who combined, I guess, uh, questions from previous vinyl tags. But since I'm pretty new here, then they're all new to me. But I might as well just go on and get it on with it. First question was, the first video you ever saw in the VC. That was by Robert Fiffen. Uh, I think he's out of St. Louis. Uh, he's the first video I ever saw. It came up on my YouTube feed, and I didn't even know there was a vinyl community. And I started watching his videos, and it led to watching other people's too. But that's the first one I have ever saw. Shout out to other VC channels. Um, since I'm fairly new, the first ones I started watching were his and... Mazzy's, Norman Mazloff's channel, um, and uh, Robert McCook uh, out of England. I started watching his. And Eight Vinyl Low, I've seen some of hers. But I'm getting to know more and more as I go along. Uh, I might need my glasses. What are your other hobbies? Well, my other hobbies are uh, I love to travel, which I've been to like about 35 countries, I think. And, uh, and movie collecting, I have some movie posters and I have a lot of DVDs of movies, but I'm a big cinephile as well. Okay. Why did you start to collect? Well, I've always liked music and I've kind of rigid when I first started listening to what the other kids were listening to when I was going on high school. And then they up buying the Rolling Stone record guide and that's what really helped me get into more music. I started going and finding five star albums on there and started buying those and finding there was a lot more music out there and so I really think the Rolling Stone record guide is probably one of the things that got me started anyway. Do you play an instrument or were you in a band? No, I do not play an instrument. I took piano and guitar lessons, but I guess I wanted to be good too fast and I didn't stay with it and I'm not any good. Ever work in a record store? Um, I never worked in a record store, but I was in them a, a lot. To, some people probably thought I worked there. What is the last album you purchased? Most recent was uh, by Blaze Foley. Let me get this out the glare. I haven't opened it yet. Uh, I got the download, I got it on Amazon, so I've already listened to it. I just haven't listened to the album itself. But he's a Texas songwriter, really well respected. This is kind of some sessions that were shot in, I don't know if it's his home or somebody's home. It re sounds really good, but you can hear like a baby crying and other things in the background sometimes, but it still sounds very good and really interesting. Show a great record with a bad cover. Well, I'm picking Green River by CCR. Just Knowing a little bit about photography, I'd be going like, they're in the shadows. You can't see them even. It's not like it's black and white film noir that they're trying to achieve. It's just like, doesn't work for me. I'd be going, hey, you need to get so the sun's coming at you and not behind you. I don't know. This always bothered me. Um, the record you wish you had an OG copy of? I don't know. I'm not. I'm more into having the music than having to having the original. I just and I want it to sound good. I would. I guess Led Zeppelin, one of the first four, wouldn't mind having an OG copy of that. I guess. Uh, show an album by a female artist. Stick to Joan Armatrading. This is the, her album, The Key. Uh, the song "Drop the Pilots" got some airplay. 
but uh, she's very good uh, musician and singer and her song everybody gotta know is a beautiful ballad but Joan Armand Trading someone you check out if you like Tracy Chapman you would probably like her as well show an earworm song well, I don't know what that means exactly. I guess something gets stuck in your head. Uh, so I got by the Sports. I think they're out of Australia. They had a song called Who Listens to the Radio that's a really catchy tune. Kind of in, it came out around the, and Ram Tchaikovsky and the Records and some of those other groups. Kind of a new wave -ish pop single. The, uh, the Sports. Um, show the best posthumous release. I couldn't really think of one um, right offhand, so I just grabbed one I've showed before. Is, and I haven't opened it yet either. I have listened to it since I got the download. But it's an Elvis Presley way down in the jungle room. A lot of uh, tracks that were recorded for the Moody Blue album and the one that came right after that or right before that. Recorded down in the jungle room. If you've been to Graceland, you have seen it. But anyway, that was it. What artists do you collect impulsively? Well, I collect Van Morrison, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bruce Springsteen, and another one is Bob Dylan. And I don't didn't bring them all with me, but I even went through his Christian phase and his standards phase. So collect about anything by all those artists that I just mentioned. Um, show an underrated album. Well, the one I picked is by Elvis Costello, Goodbye Cruel World. Uh, a lot of people really rag on this album. They don't think it's very good. Even Elvis himself didn't like this album, but I think he was wrong, because I really enjoy it. Uh, had the, the single, The Only Flame in Town, Home Truth, Love Field, Worthless Thing, Inch by Inch. I think there's a lot of great songs, actually, on this album. and. Elvis, you're wrong. This is a this was a pretty good album. A favorite double album. Uh, well, there's quite a few out there, but I picked uh, "London Calling" by The Clash, one of my all-time favorite albums. At the title track, "Train in Vain," which isn't listed on here, but it's the last song on there. Uh, "Revolution Rock." Lost in the Supermarket, Rudy Can't Fail, Coca-Cola. All, all the songs are great. This is a, a wonderful album. The Clash, London Calling. Uh, show a Rainy Day album. I picked uh, this Chet Baker Sings. Um, first jazz, first jazz recording I ever bought probably was Chet Baker. It was called, I think it's Don't Look Now, no, that's not, Let's Get Lost. Let's, let's get, let's, let's get lost. I bought that and I go, ah, oh, this is, this is really good. And it started to get me into a few jazz things. So I, I've started buying some since then, but that's, Chet Baker was probably the first person I ever bought. Unless, I guess Mo's Allison too, but, uh. Anyway, great trumpet player and great, great album. An artist you've met. Well, I picked uh, Big Sandy, a Big Sandy and the Fly Right Boys. I have, looks like a little smeared my autograph I got from him. But uh, this is a solo album that he did with a bunch of doo-wop songs and some other things. Uh, Robert Williams is, was his, is his real name. 
and big Sandy and the Fly Right Boys, they do a lot of kind of rockabilly, roots rock, um, but really good. But I went to a venue and I got there early. They had a bar in there and went and sat at the bar and he was sitting in there and we started talking and uh, he had just done this doo-wop kind of uh, CD and I recommended that he check out The Shepherds if he was ever gonna do one again. I don't know if he ever did check out The Shepherds, but he hasn't done another doo-wop. Uh, you know, and he hasn't, they haven't released anything for quite a while, but they're out, based out of California, but very good if you ever see Big Sandy. Show record with a sentimental value. Well, it's so sentimental that I couldn't even find it. Uh, I know it's around here somewhere. I found the sleeve because I wrote on there what it was. Canadian, like the Canadian Sweethearts. Adios Aloha was the name of the song. And the only reason I have that is because when I was a kid, we went to Montgomery Wards and they had three uh, 45s for a dollar. So I had two brothers, we each got to pick a song. I picked that, I don't know, I think because I was taking Spanish. But I, they're a group out of Canada. Not the greatest song in the world, but it was the first record I ever owned, and it's here somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> Show an album turning 20 this year. Well, I started collecting records in the, when I was in like high school, maybe a little before that, and around 1986 to about 2010, I bought a lot of CDs and got into the CD movements. I'm not gonna go back and buy records for all those ones that I bought, maybe a few that I really like, but uh, so I don't have, I couldn't find much from 2000 that I had on albums, so I just, Warren Z. Vaughn's uh, Life Will Kill Ya is turning 20. Really good album. Uh, for my next trick, I'll need a volunteer. Is one of my favorite songs of his. I was in the house with when the house burned down. A good song about aging. Life will kill you. Fistful of rain. Back does a good uh, rendition of Stevie Winwood's "Back in the High Life" again. Really, really good album though. Underrated. And show a trilogy of albums. So I guess that means like three albums in a row. From, a, from an artist. So I chose uh, Bobby Bland. I think, this, I think it's 61, 62, and 63, or 62, 63, and 64, I can't remember. But Two Steps from the Blues. I'm trying to see if I can figure it out. But one of the best, one of my favorite all-time albums. Uh, he's one of the best voices, I think, was Bobby Bland. Kind of soul blues, I guess you would call it. But his rendition of St. James Infirmary is one of the best songs ever. Yeah, so Bobby Bland, Two Steps from the Blues. Next album came right after that was Here's the Man, which had his biggest hit. Um, Turn on your love light. 362236. Twisting up the road. Another really good recording. Also, Stormy Monday Blues, I think. This is my favorite instead of, not T-Bone, Walker T-Bone. I can't think of his name. Uh, and then the next one was Calling Me, That's the Way Love Is, which both those songs are on there and they're both really good songs. This is probably the second best of that trilogy. Um, Share Your Love With Me is a wonderful song. Ain't it a good thing? No sweeter girl. Anyway, those are the three Bobby Bland songs for our albums for my uh, trilogy. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope everyone's staying safe and take care. Have a good day.